Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you, God, so much for your love and your guidance. I ask you, Lord, to please be with me as we come to this topic, Father God. I ask you, Lord, to please give us the strength. Holy Spirit, be with us as we learn more about your scriptures of how to worship you, Lord. Teach us how to love each other and also bless us in our storm. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me for God's final message series. Today's topic is the thousand years in heaven or the millennium. Now, the millennium is actually not found in the Bible, but it refers to the thousand years. For instance, Trinity is not found in the Bible, but it's used for a word for three gods, for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Trinity or tri-eternity. Tri is three, and then those three are eternity. That's where we get the Trinity. The word millennium <coughs> is actually two Latin words. And this, this millennium says uh, this thousand year period of time is called the millennium. From two Latin words, milli meaning 1,000 and annum meaning year. So we have the word 1,000 years, but we don't have the word millennium, but it means that's what it actually means. Now the first question I want to share with you is that what event marks the beginning of the 1,000 years and why is it so important to our lives to the end of time? Well, in Revelation 20 verse 1 or verse 4, it says, And I saw thrones and they sat upon them, and judge, judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or, or in their hands. And they, lived with, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So when Jesus comes, which is the second coming, and takes God, takes his people to heaven, we will be in heaven for a thousand years, which means, my brothers and sisters, we are not in heaven forever. Heaven was not designed for us to be there forever, because when we go to heaven, we're only for a thousand years. And as we see at the end of this topic, at the end of the thousand years, we come back to earth, because at the end, in the beginning of Genesis, God said he has given dominion up for us dominion upon this earth. He didn't give us dominion in heaven. He gave us dominion on earth. Amen. So here's the thousand year timeline that we, that we have. In 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 4 verse 6, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when Jesus comes, he's not coming quietly. He's coming, that he's letting everybody know that he is Jesus and he is coming soon. He's coming with a shout and the Bible says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. For the trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and you shall be changed. Amen. I can't wait for that moment where we all transform. So those that have wrinkles in our bodies and those who are, who are aching in our legs and our knees and I'm talking about me and people upwards we're going through some age dif age difficulties amen these are the things that's going to happen we're going to be transformed into a holy light and a holy building or the bible calls it a building or a holy being that we enter into heaven a sinless body and that day is going to come amen and Philippians 3.21 actually expands more about this. It says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto a glorious body? So the body that you have now, when we go to heaven, is going to be a glorious body. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. I want you to listen to this one. It says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and, shall, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Can everybody say amen to that? That means that when Jesus comes, he's going to come in the clouds of heaven with the shout, with the trumpets, with the loud noise. And then at that time, he, we, he's not going to come down on earth. We're actually going to fly to him and he's going to fly to us. And we're going to meet each other in midair. Amen. This is amazing because I remember the time when I had a dream and I and I thought I was flying. How many of us have actually thought that we were flying in our dreams? And we love to fly, but there are times when I was falling and I oh that that's I was okay, I'm gonna tell you that there was one time I was dreaming and I was soaring through the wind, and then all of a sudden I started to fall. And then when I was far, I was trying to fly again, I was trying to fly again, and then next minute I I I couldn't fly, and then I woke up. 
because my wife woke me up and she was saying, are you okay? And I go, yeah, I'm okay. He goes, I go, why, what's wrong? And I said, well, because when I look, you're shaking and then all of a sudden I looked again, you're like this. <laughs> and another says, I, in my mind, I was trying to fly, but I looked like someone kind of, yeah, crazy on the bed, thinking something was going to happen. But another, but my brother says, what I'm trying to share with you, this is not a dream. This is what's actually going to happen. We're going to meet Jesus in midair. We shall be with Jesus in the holy city for a thousand years. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 8 it says, And then shall the wicked, that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the brightness of his coming. So with those that are alive, that are wicked, now real quick, people say, how can God do those to the wicked? I don't see anyone, just because they don't believe in God, does that mean they're wicked? No, that's not what it means. But the problem with this scripture is that we're reading it in English. In fact, if you look at the Greek word wicked, it means lawbreakers. Those that broke the law. Those are the ones that are going to be consumed by the fire, by the brightness of his coming. So here in the timeline, we know the beginning of a thousand years is the second coming, which we call the resurrection of life, because the dead in Christ rise first. Meeting in Jesus in mid-air, and we shall be with Jesus in that holy city. And at that same time, the wicked or the lawbreakers shall be consumed by his righteousness. In Revelation 20, verse 5, it says, The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, real quick, the Bible says Jesus came. And when he came, the dead in Christ rise first. But and then in Revelation 20, verse 5, it says the rest of the dead uh, did, uh, did not live. They, they remained dead. So who are the ones that remain dead if the dead in Christ rise first? You guess it. It's the wicked. Those that died and had a chance to choose God but did not choose God, they were the ones that remained dead. So they will not see Jesus coming. So Willie Jr., who are the wicked or the lawbreakers that will see Jesus coming and be consumed by his righteousness? Those are the ones that are alive. But the ones that are already dead, they remain dead. The only ones that are resurrected when Jesus comes are the ones that died in Christ first. Amen. Now this is, now let's, so this is called the first resurrection. So the second coming is the resurrection of life or the first resurrection. Now let's continue. If there's a first resurrection, so there has to be a second resurrection to end the thousand years. So who will be raised in the first resurrection and who will be raised in the second resurrection? So, so the, we already covered this one. The first resurrection, the, the ones that be raised in the first resurrection is the dead in Christ. John 5, 28. All that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Those are that died in Christ before Jesus came. Those are the ones that are going to be alive. So the ones that are loved ones that died in Christ, we will see them again. And they that live, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So remember, at the end, the beginning of a thousand years is the resurrection of life. At the end of the thousand years, he calls this the resurrection of damnation. Resurrection of life, resurrection of damnation. Dead in Christ rise first in the resurrection of life. But the evil ones or the wicked or the lawbreakers will rise up at the end of the thousand years called the resurrection of damnation. Amen. What else, what else will happen at the time of the resurrection? Revelation 16 verse 18 it says, And there was a great earthquake, such as not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. So there's going to be an earthquake that's going to happen. Verse 20, it says, And every island fled away, and the mountains were not, found, were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. That's like almost 30 kgs coming down from heaven, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hailstones at the weight of almost 30 kgs. Can you imagine that falling on your head? Can you imagine that coming down and hurting the ones that you love? This is going to be an event that's going to happen. So far, everything has been prophesied and come true. We're all re we're just waiting for one more sign or one more see or one more one more trumpet to, to, to sound off, and Jesus is coming. It's going to happen. Let's read Revelation 20 verse 1. 
It says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven and having the key of the bottomless pit. The Greek word for bottomless pit means abusos, meaning abyss or nothingless. So this angel had the key of nothingless and a great chain on his head. So this is not an actual chain. It's, for instance, it's a symbol. For, it's, it's a metaphor word that they use to, to, to expand more what is actually going to happen. For instance, like if I was busy and my brother was needed my help and he calls me up, he goes, bro, I need your help to lift these chairs and take it into another, another house. And I go, oh, sorry, my hands are tied. Does that mean that my hands are actually tied or does it mean I'm busy? So it was a metaphor to say something was going to happen. Something's going to happen. So the angel had the change of his hand and, and the, the keys to the bottomless pit. And Jude 1 kind of explains a bit more. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own inhabitation, he that reserved an everlasting chains under darkness under the, under, unto the judgment of the great day. So the, the chain that he, she has was an everlasting chains under darkness. Okay. And the angel laid hold on the dragon. So watch this. Now let's put this, these verses together. An angel came with the key of nothingness. And he, she had the chain of darkness. And he, she laid hold of, ho, she laid hold on the dragon. And the dragon is Satan. So she laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and sat and bound him for a thousand years. So Satan was on earth. With nobody around because the wicked did not rise up. The wicked that were alive were destroyed. And the ones that died in Christ were raised up and went to heaven. With the ones that are alive in Christ were raised up and went to heaven. And they are all in heaven for a thousand years. So who's on earth at that thousand years? It's only Satan. So my brothers and sisters, I wanted to share this, this part with you. It's because hell does exist. But it's not hell down on the earth. Oh, hell, even though we have some hellish moments, but there's the hell that it's referred to in the Bible in Revelation is referring to a time that Satan will be on his own because hell was not designed for mankind. It was designed for Satan. Amen. That means hell was not even, we always were, oh, if we're not going to heaven, we're going to hell. That's actually wrong, my brothers and sisters, because it, when hell comes, which this, this desolate nothingness, only Satan's going to be there. We won't be there. Just him. In Isaiah 24, verse 1, it says, The land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. So now, if we look at this, it means there's nothingness. Everything is desolate during the time, where for, uh, to, during the time of the thousand years. So let's go back to the timeline, just so that we can sink these things in, because this is a very important event that hasn't come yet, and it is going to come. The second coming is the beginning of the thousand years. We call this the resurrection of life or the first resurrection. At this time, when Jesus comes and takes his people up, we're meeting Jesus in mid-air. We shall be with Jesus in the holy city. The wicked or the lawbreakers shall be consumed, and Satan is chained for a thousand years, and the earth will be a graveyard. What is the condition of the earth for a thousand years? Isaiah 24 verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down. My brothers and sisters, heaven was not designed for mankind. There'll be no one alive but Satan himself because hell was designed for Satan. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 23. And I beheld the earth and lo it was without form and void and heaven and heaven and the heavens and and they had no light. Amen. So here we see that hell is going to be a de uh, hell or earth at this time is going to be a desolated place. And Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 24 says, I beheld the mountains and lo they tremble. There was no man, all the birds of the heavens were fled. There'll be nothing, my brothers and sisters. In verse 26, it says, I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. It's going to happen, my brothers and sisters. This earth is nothing. Now I'm repeating myself about this because I know there's a lot of teachings saying that if you don't die, you're going to hell. You got to understand hell is not designed for us. It was designed for Satan. 
And the slain, Jeremiah 25, verse 33, it says, And the slain of the Lord shall be at the day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. So the earth in, this, in, in its form, a void of form, this earth will be like a graveyard, meaning that the, those that died will not be buried. It will be like a whole graveyard. It will not be lamented. Amen. And that is the beginning. These, there's so many points, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible to let you know that there is a, a second coming, a literal second coming, and there is a thousand years where we will go to heaven and Satan will be on earth by himself. Where would the saints be during a thousand years and that will be, and, and what will they be doing? So they'll be in heaven for a thousand years. And the Bible says, do you, eat, do you not know that the saints Know ye not that they sh that we shall be judged, that we shall judge angels? Did you know that God has placed us when we go to heaven to be a jury? To, because we are the ones, listen to it. If we look at a court case, they pick out a jury, the ones that can decide whether the person is guilty or not. A jury are, the, are people that are law-abiding citizens. Amen? The jury are a law-abiding citizens. And with this jury, they had to just gather the information and the facts to see uh, what happened at the event that they weren't there. But they know that it's, it's true, it's form, and it's evidence. For instance, remember at the time, the, the, my topic, the origin of sin. This is the part where I was sharing that God could have destroyed Satan straight away, but he couldn't because he's the loving God, but he's also a just God. And there were so many things would happen if he had destroyed Satan. And I explained how all this happened. But what he did is that he needed a jury, people that's going through the stuff in our world and say, yeah, God is right. I, I see the evidence at hand. And if Lucifer was ruling heaven the way he ruled earth, then heaven will not be a holy place. We shall judge the angels that have been putting us down throughout our daily lives on earth. Amen. What will happen at the close of the thousand years? Zechariah 14 verse 1, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olive, which is before Jerusalem on the east. So when at the end of the thousand years, we shall come. God is going to come back to earth because we don't belong in heaven. We belong on earth when heaven comes to earth. Revelation 21 verse 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is a marriage ceremony that's going to happen where the woman comes back down, where God's people comes down, back down from heaven after a thousand years. Jesus standing on Mount Olive, the holy city descending from heaven. What will happen next when Satan is free from his bondage? Well, in Revelation 20 verse 5 says, but the rest of the dead live not again until what? The thousand years were finished. So let's go back to this prison that the angel has laid chains on of darkness, a desolated place. For a thousand years, who's on earth? Just Satan. He is in prison for a thousand years because there was no one to deceive. So when, when now at the end of the thousand years, when the dead, the wicked shall rise again, is he free from bondage? Yes, he is. Because now he has people to deceive. Amen. But the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. So here the timeline. Jesus standing on Mount Olive. The holy city descending from heaven. And the wicked live again. Revelation 20 verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. How was he loosed? When the dead, when, when there was a time for him to deceive people again. When the dead rise, the, rise up again. So Satan is free from his bondage. What will Satan do when the wicked are raised? Listen to this. In verse 8, it says, And, and shall go out to deceive the nation which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. And compassed the camp of saints about and, be, and the beloved city. 
So this here, my brothers and sisters, they, Satan is going to gather all the wicked, the lawbreakers all across the world to gather around to that city that descending from heaven and make war with the saints, make war with God. It's going to happen. At this crucial moment, what would stop everything? And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So God said he forgives your sin and he will no longer remember it. But there's a book of judgment where all your sins will be there. So all the things that when you had a chance to not steal, when God said don't do it, but you did it. When you had a chance to choose Christ, but you said tomorrow. When you had a chance to make a difference and, and do the right thing, but you didn't. When you had a chance to do something good, but you end up doing something bad. All the things that you had a chance to come to God, but you try to hide all your secrets. You try to hide all your past and cover everything up and put a smile on your face. And so you come to church with a smile by still holding the things of this world and still coming to church and thinking it's okay. That's a lukewarm person, my brothers and sisters. Or are you the type of person when you say there is no God or you're sick of church because you're sick of being judged? That's a, the devil is a liar. You should never allow anybody to put you in a place where your salvation is at stake. Just because someone can't stand you in church, that's his business. That's her problem. That shouldn't be your problem because you should never allow anyone to take control of your emotions because the devil can mess with your emotions, but he can never mess with your will. In Revelation 20, verse 11, 12, it says, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their work. It's going to happen. And the judge, book of judgment is specifically there for God's people when he goes to heaven. When we go to heaven, we're going to ask, Oh, Lord, how come Pastor Willie Jr. didn't make it? He was preaching all over the world. Or how come my mother didn't make it? And he goes, look at the book. And when we go through the book, we'll see, oh, it was true and just of his choice that he's made. He doesn't need the book. He's true to his word. He said he will forgive you and no longer remember the sins that he, we have done. The Bible says he throw it into the deepest part of the ocean. I would love to be with someone like that that doesn't bring back your past, that doesn't bring back your sins, but sees who you want to be today. Isn't that the God that what we want, is the God that we should serve? Amen. Revelation 19 verse 1. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. They're, give, they're, they're praising God because he, deserve, he deserves all the, all the praises. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged a great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Amen. There's going to be a time, my brothers and sisters, at the end of the thousand years, the Jerusalem, the golden city, shall descend from heaven. And people were going to make war against them. But God is true and just and powerful. Now, why would they try to make war when they know they can't win? Because they have nothing else to lose. What happens next? And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Now, real quick, people, there's a lot of beliefs and a lot of uh, teachings that, that are out in the church saying that if you don't choose God, you are going to hell and you're going to be burned in the lake of fire forever. The fire, and now, that, that doesn't sound like a loving God for me. Well, well, he's a just God. Yeah, but that's not being just. Why would God make me burn forever for 60 years of my life on earth that I've sinned and then I didn't choose God for the 60 years of my life. I'm not 60, amen. For 40 years of my life, amen. For 40 years of my life, why would God let me suffer those sins for eternity? It doesn't make sense. So what does God mean about the eternal fire or the lake of fire? In Jude 1 verse 7, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, 
and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. fire. Real quick, real quick, amen. Now the fire that came down and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, is that still burning today? No, it's not. But the remembrance of it is still there today. When you go to Sodom and Gomorrah, you will see millions of brimstones. Because the Bible says brimstone came down from heaven. There's evidence of brimstones that came down. Millions all across Sodom and Gomorrah. And the city is a desolated place. It's destroyed. It's just ashes. And it's there to remember that eternal fire is referred to the eternal remembrance. So when Jesus comes down from heaven with, the, with, with us in the, in the golden city, and this earth becomes a new home for us, there's going to be a place where the lake of fire was that destroyed all the wicked or lawbreakers, and that will be a remembrance of us of what sin actually did when we chose it. Why fire? In Hebrews 12, 21, God is our consuming fire. He's fire. Amen. <laughs> Exodus 20, verse 16 and 17, it says, And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Jesus Christ is fire. His throne was like a fury flame. His wheels as burning fire. And his face was was as it were the sun and his feet as a pillar of fire. So everything about him, his chariots, his wheels, everything about him is fire. The same shall drink of the, of the wine of the wrath of God, which was poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Amen. That means, remember the Bible says that they shall be consumed with his righteousness. Remember the second coming? They shall be consumed with his righteousness because his righteousness is his fire, which means that they'll be consumed by his presence because his presence is fire. God wants to take us all to heaven, but there's no eternal fire here because there's no such thing as an eternity in a place of time. But there is eternity in heaven. And if you are a lawbreaker, if you are a wicked one or a lawbreaker that didn't abide with God and he just took you into heaven, guess what would happen? You will burn eternity because sin cannot be in the presence in heaven, in the presence of God. And God does not want that to happen to you. Oh, amen. Amen. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. And 1 John 1, verse 5, it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. The Greek word for light in 1 John is phos, which means fire. So if God was fire, he said, let us make man in our image. That means Adam and Eve was in the image of a fire. See, the only way to, to, to withstand fire is if you're on fire. So if you, you want to be on fire, you have to be on fire. Oh, amen. This is what's going to happen. This is the only way we're able to enter into heaven. And God will take us because we'll be transformed in, in this light or this force or this fire to enter into a fiery place, heaven. Verse 2, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. Stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were able to withstand the fire of the furnace because they were already on fire. For us to be prepared for Jesus' coming, we have to be on fire now to be on fire when he comes. Amen. Hebrews 1 verse 7. And all the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. My brothers and sisters, we have to be on fire for God's word. Ezekiel 33 verse 11, it says, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel, God's people? See, he doesn't take pleasure of, of death for the wicked, for the lawbreakers. He doesn't take pleasure of that. He wants everyone to come to, he to heaven because he knows you are a unique person. There is no one like you. And he wants to take you into heaven because there is no one like you. He doesn't take pleasure. 
He want, he's here to destroy sin once and for all, pain once and for all. But if we're still latching onto sin, if we're still latching onto pain, then we will be destroyed with it. For behold, I create a new, create new heavens and a new earth. 2 Peter 3.13 Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. My brothers and sisters, God is coming, but he's going to purge the earth and punish Lucifer for all the sins that he made us do. He, he, he pushed us to do. At the end of the day, he didn't make us to do it. We need to stop using that excuse, oh, it was the devil, it was the devil. No, it wasn't. It was you. It was me. We made that choice. According to the Bible, the Bible told us that we have the power and authority to tread upon Scorpion, even the evil one, which means that we have more power than the devil himself. And the devil knows this. That's why he cannot come confront us because we're too strong. If he came face to face with us, we would win because we have Christ in us. Hallelujah. So what he does, he deceives us. He plants seeds that we nurtured in our in our in our life that the decisions we made in our life we the seed that he planted we start to nurture it by not choosing god by choosing a cigarette by going to clubbing by being hatred by being a gossiper in church by backstabbing our brothers and sisters we nurtured the seed that god that satan has planted we nurtured it so we chose it so we need to stop blaming the devil even though he is the root of it we at the end of the day we made the choice we are more powerful than him and God is going to say, don't worry, he's going to get what he deserves. He's going to get it. And we will be victorious. No more suffering. No more crying in bed. No more struggling day to day, wondering if you have enough money to feed your kids. No more. Just peace. And joy the one that saved us time is running out my brothers and sisters the second coming the millennium the thousand years and the new heaven on earth he's coming to take us home let us pray gracious lord heavenly father thank you god so much for your love for your guidance i ask you lord to please be with my brothers and sisters to let them know you're just around the corner to show love to those that don't show love back. To reach out to those that need you more than ever before. To let them know that forgiveness plays a big part in our life. Because if we don't forgive, Father, we become bitter. And we do not want to be bitter. It makes a whole lot of sense when you commanded us to forgive. Because you knew the result of forgive unforgiveness becomes bitter. You commanded us to forgive. Because you know it will hinder us from being strong in the relationship with you. We have so much going on and the devil wants to magnify our problems and hatred in our hearts to, towards somebody else so that we will not have access to love, gentleness, joy, peace, strength, and courage. Help us to let go of the things that are stopping us to be one with you. And let God, blessed be your name, God, in Jesus' name.